And welcome back to another session of Scholar Airway with Dr. Torres, the emergency medicine doctor in New York City. Um, some of you are not believers in DSI. I am a believer in DSI because I've seen, I guess retrospectively, crazy attendings who have seen patients tear off their oxygen, be hypoxic upon coming to the hospital, either through walk-in or through ambulance, and can't tolerate the nasal cannula or doesn't want it because they're delirious either from drugs, hypercapnia, hypoxia, and we play this game of Russian roulette. We try to get a line in as fast as possible. We strain them as much as possible with as many men and women in the room stopping them or him or she from taking the oxygenation off them. Sats are not going up, patient's not cooperative. And then we give the sedation, kill the drive that's keeping the patient spontaneously breathing, keep whatever sats that they were having, and they plummet because they're sedated and because we gave RSI, because of course, everyone eats in America, has a full stomach, it's presumed, and it's paralyzed. And it's a race. Who gets the tube in before the patient goes into asystole, PEA, or such bradycardia that you think you feel a pulse or not feel a pulse, this patient's starting to get epi, atropine, CPR, all induced from hypoxia. DSI is a way of getting around it. DSI wasn't around when I graduated from Jacoby, but Guess what? I learned about it from uh, going on the world podcast. Uh, EM Crit, learning about it, learning what situations to do this. And I practice. I practice medicine. When you practice medicine, you practice new skills, new techniques, new medication. Practice using ketamine. I've only once used, uh, used Presidex and was just finally warned that most likely Presidex is ideal for it. Patients with very labile VPs that are very, uh, that can be very high. Uh, and patients who have, you think of hypertensive emergencies or dissections, intracranial bleeds, stroking out, uh, having an MI or acute pulmonary edema, just worry about the bradycardia. But I was told that you don't need the bolus, you may just need the drip, and that may be adequate for enough sedation that allows spontaneous breathing by the patient and allows them to get NIV, non-invasive ventilation. And ketamine works very well. I have been raved to use ketamine on everyone who needs DSI, non-invasive ventilation. I've been kind of gun shy or scared with uh, the 90 year old with history of cabbage, CHF, low EF, uh, and already tachycardic with AFib. I don't want to cause an iatrogenic m and or death on my hands, so. But maybe I'll try it. Maybe I'll blunt any catecholamine surge with some fentanyl, one mic per kilo. Why not? Patients are critical and nil. They'll also die if I go the other route, the old school route. RSI them, regardless of what sets are. RSI them without doing proper resuscitation of the blood pressure and heart rate. RSI them bef before providing rescue oxygenation and providing enough pre-oxygenation that I have a chance to delay a couple of seconds and get a better view on my laryngoscopy and getting the tube in. So, no excuse not learning new things. It's even harder as an attending who doesn't have a supervising attending to learn new things. You go to conferences, you go and listen to podcasts, but you still have to treat patients and eventually get over the fear. DSI does work. As a side note, if you don't have any DSI on you, at some institutions we have cheaper version manual resuscitators. Blow by does not work. What does work is spontaneous breathing by the patient. And if there's apneic breathing or delayed breathing and you need to give rescue breaths, you give breaths to the patient. But this is not a closed system. You know how I know? This open port allows air to go in and out. Must be a safety, like a safety mechanism in case a patient 
stuck on this with a, ma a mask, but it doesn't help you if you're trying to pre-oxygenate the patient and denitrogenate them as much as possible. Washing out that nitrogen won't be that effective with this. 80% of the air we breathe has nitrogen, right? And there's all, I want to demonstrate to you the leak that happens. So look at the bag and see how much of it I breathe in and out. So I got this from a Kovacs video that this is allowing air to go in and out as I'm trying to get air from this reservoir. If I were to pre-fill it with 15 liters or higher, I'd be breathing that air in, but also diluting it with the 20% only air, uh, oxygenated air that I have around me. Now, you can close the system by putting a peep valve. You don't have to have it at 20, you could have it at five or 10. Let's see what happens. Let's see if I am able to close my system now. So this is working because I'm taking my own spontaneous breathing. I am giving, I'm, I'm taking my own breaths. I am taking the air in this closed system now, fully with 100% oxygen as much of it's getting into this reservoir and as much as going into this BVM. Now, I'm taking these breaths. It's more dangerous when I'm abnic or near abnic. When you give me rest your breaths, you should not try to kill me by over bagging. Just gently under the bag, bag, and let it recoil and bag. There's an awesome video of Kovacs doing this to a cadaver, just providing high flow nasal cannula oxygenation through the nasal prongs, high flow oxygenation through a BVM with high enough PEEP that valvular started opening up on its own without bagging, providing any active ventilation to the BVM. And then when you do provide some BVM uh, compressions, squeezing of the bag, it's amazing how much of the lungs expand. You do not need to bag a patient 30 uh, times a minute or 40 times a minute. All right, 10 to 12, gently, let it recoil, pause, again. That's what you need to recruit alveoli, peep and a closed valve. Blow by does not work. Patient is either actively breathing or you're breathing for him. I believe in DSI. I am a fan of Scott Wecker, not apologize. Very smart idea. Don't knock it until you've tried it. Okay? I'll welcome you back for another session of A School of Airway with Dr. Torres.